What's up, family and friends? Welcome to the Woke Nation, our nation of fact for truth, where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of fact for truth without fear, without favor, and without faint. Where we encourage us to live our lives and live it well through the knowledge of fact for truth because it is our lives. And personally, I encourage you to enjoy your life wherever you are. Let no one fool you again after you have seen or known the truth. They may tell you it's not uh, what you think, it's not what you see. No. You cannot unseen what you have seen. You cannot unknow what you have known. That's why you don't need to believe anything. You don't need to believe in anything, in anyone or in yourself. But know yourself and your part, then walk in your part without competition, without comparison, without fear, without faith, without love, without humility, without hope, without fear of the unknown. Know that your life is eternal. Death is not your end. Death is part of your life, just as birth is. Okay, you are eternal being. You are not a creature of any God, man or woman. You are a living being. You existed before your parents conceived you. If you didn't exist, they cannot. Con they would have not conceived you, and no one can conceive what does not exist and bring it into reality. It exists, visible or invisible. It has to be real. If it's just words, 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 and promises, promises, telling you you will get to know after you die. Fuck it. And uh, enjoy your fruitful life. Your life is fruitful. You are breathing, right? Your life is fruitful. Uh, comparing yourself with what others are doing or having is what is destroying you. It is called your desire. Because you are moved by what they are doing or what they have, then you desire to do or have the same thing, then you create your own problem without knowing yourself. You need to know yourself and your part. That's your nature. Walk in it. You will never suffer in your path, never. You only suffer outside your path. Okay. I don't want you to be foolish. That's why I'm sharing with us what I titled today, Foolish People. So welcome to Bible study, Foolish People. According to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, it said that God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, in other words, they are foolish people. What make people God's people? What make people God's people is conversion. Converted people are foolish people. And that's why they cannot say the truth with their mouth. They say it in them. That's why their book said that the fool has said in his heart, the fool, the one that believed in God, the fool, the one that is that has been converted to believe in God, fear God, worship God, love God, humble before God, you know, hope in God. That foolish person, those foolish people have said in his or in his heart or in their hearts. There is no God. Outwardly, they pretend there is God. When they pray, they pretend there is God. When they worship, they pretend there is God. But in them, they know the truth and they are saying the truth because according to their book also, their God desires the truth in the innermost being. That is where people say the truth. That's why they can deceive you with their words. That's why they can deceive you with their actions. But in them, they know the truth. That's why they can testify against you wrongfully. That's why they can falsify everything about you. But in them, they know the truth. That you are their savior. That you give them what, you know, even people they respect more than you ever dreamt given to them. Converted people are foolish people. 
That's what the Abrahamic religion turned African into. Even what the so-called spirituality you're calling African religion or African spirituality today is also part of Abrahamic religion. It doesn't base on any reality. It doesn't base on nature. I want you to know this. Your type is among animals. Your type is among trees. But that doesn't make you animals or tree. You share the same source, common source with them, which is called the earth, the universe, the nature. We all are part of that nature. Oh, you think you are superior to animals? You are superior to trees? You are ignorant of yourself. You are part of them too, because nature made us all one. Your breath is not different from the breath of that chicken you are eating. It's the same thing, and you will be eating also. The factual truth that even the people that claim to be wise, all that, don't know is this, and they hide it from you when they wrote those nonsense in the book. They didn't tell you the factual truth that you are food. You can claim all you want, you can kill people for whatever, but you also will be killed and be eaten. You are food. You are no more than food. There's no purpose of to with life. You were born to live, explore, and enjoy life. That's it. There's no age limit um age for death. Mm -mm. There's no, you can die at any time. You can die in the womb. You can die be, uh, uh, being delivered from the womb. You can die the moment after delivery. You can die a month or a week or a year or century or centuries after birth. That doesn't make you no more food. They lie to you when they tell you there is a spirit in you or you are a spirit and there is a place you will go after you die. There's no other place you're going after you die except the place you came from. It is called the earth. The earth is ours. It's not the Lord's. It belongs to us. It belongs to animals. It belongs to plants. It does not belong to God. So know the earth you are living in because that is your eternal home. There's no heaven. There's no hellfire after death there's no such thing like afterlife in the first place okay because you are always being you have no beginning and you have no end don't let all this come at ease evil men evil women in the this on the under the disguise of ministers of god keep lying and robbing you wake up use your brain Converted to choose ignorance over knowledge. Foolish people. So they always learning, but unable to come to or come in terms with the truth because they believe scriptures. They believe uh, scriptures over science. They believe lies over science. They believe religion over science. They believe all scriptures are inspired by God. Say so they always learning, but unable to come in terms with the truth. They cannot acquire the knowledge of the truth. All they have is the, the knowledge of God. And God is an illusion. Evil one at that. When we say God is evil, it means God is anti-nature. God don't want you to be happy yourself. God don't want you to live your life. God don't want you to be yourself. That's why everyone that believes in God is prone to do evil, to think evil and do evil because God corrupts the brain. And once your brain is co corrupt, you become schizophrenic. You don't know yourself. You see them believe scriptures and shun 
science. You said tell them this is how this thing. Oh, okay, God is the one that gave them the, the, the wisdom. God, who gave you the brain? God gave you brain. God cannot give anything. If God is the one that gave them brain to the, uh, invent those things, why can't God give you such the same brain to invent what you need? Why are you laboring to buy what others invented? You are even buying those things others invented in worship of that God. You claim gave them brain. So if God gave them brain to build that, why are you buying it? Why can't you get it free if God gave them brain to do that? You are buying those things because people labor to have it and they, they establish the system of buying and selling. Instead of us, all of us having and enjoying those things, they make it known. If you don't attend school, if you don't have so so amount of money, you cannot enjoy those things. That's part of wickedness. These um, foolish, uh, stupid people, converted people, they value books over brands. So you see, they see, they believe a book is holy, but they are corrupt. They are unholy. Imagine human being believing that God they have not seen and they cannot see is holy, but they are unholy. They believe that God they have not seen and cannot see cares about them more than you they can see. And you cares about them. They value books over brains. You tell them, come on, can't you see how you're suffering? No, the Bible says, Quran says, it corrupts their ability to reason and come up with solution to their problem. So they keep believing and hoping that one day miracle will happen, which can never happen, no matter. Why do these people remain foolish? Even after you show them fast, they themselves have experienced reality. But they turn blind eyes to that reality, open their eyes, hoping that God will do something for them. In their times of need, they rather, they rather spend time with you to discuss or come up with solution to their problem. They choose to go to church. They choose to go to mosque or to their sec section of prayers where they are praying to God to reveal something for them, to help them. Then after some time, they blame you for their failure. They blame you for their suffering but continue praising that God that have not shown up and cannot show up to help them. They remain foolish because they have fear. And the worst fear is fear of God, fear of the unknown. And they call it wisdom. They even believe that nonsense written in a book that tell them the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. He said that keeping God's commandment is understanding. Aye. That is foolishness embraced by foolish people and hate and can kill anyone who disbelieves it. Another thing that keeps them foolish is faith. Faith in imaginary beings, faith in imaginary things, faith in imaginary places. In fact, these people believe that imaginary world is more real than the real world. They hate physical world for imaginary world. And they tell you that they are wise. You are the foolish one. You will go to hell. They will go to heaven. And in the physical world, you are in heaven, they are in hell. So they believe the table will turn over their dead body. That's after they die, the table will turn. That's why he tell them, you that is poor, be happy. You that is rich, 
more <laughs> evil people because they want the poor to live in the illusion of being rich and they want the rich to leave whatever riches he has and come and join them. No wise rich man or rich woman can do that. That's why that rich, uh, rich young man in Matthew chapter 19, when Jesus says, sell all you have and give it to the poor, then come and follow me. He says, shut up, fuck you. I wanted to go have eternal life. I don't need it anymore. I want this physical life where I can solve my problems, where I can buy what I need, where I can build what I want. I don't want a world where somebody promised me after death, I will inherit so, so, so. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added to you in the resurrection. That's in the regeneration. I mean, where after death, that's when you will receive it. Then you see foolish people laboring, saying they are seeking the kingdom of God, building houses of God, worshiping God in their place. Some people even give up their jobs, give up their lives for God. Go to Africa and see the havoc of fear of God and the faith in God has caused among us as a people. Look at African leaders. They are cowards and they are faithfuls. Are they doing anything to better Africa? No. They rather go and look for white man who can come and do it for them. And you know what white people do when you, get, you open just little door for them. They take the whole land. Another thing that keep these people foolish is hope. Hope of miracles. Hope of life and the glory after death. That's their hope. The reason why your parents labored and beat you to believe what they believe is because of this hope. All that people that believe in God, people that preach God, all they have is hope. But when it comes to reality, all they need is your money. When it comes to reality, they will begin to look up to you. And so, some, sometimes it is too late, especially if it's somebody like me. Hope! They don't have reality. All they have is hope. They don't have substance. I hope uh, when I die, I hope, I hope, I hope. And you see con artists called ministers of God exploiting them in Roman Catholic Church in the name of mass for the dead. You see them exploiting them in Pentecostal churches or evangelical churches in the name of blessings of God. Another thing that keeps them foolish is love. Love of God. To love God is to love slavery. To love God is to love bondage. To love God is to love evil. God is evil. Love keeps you in slavery. That's why they call they, 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 they call marriage like. I have found my loves. I love you. Somebody I love. They are not real. They love you. They are not real. Anyone that love you is not real to you. For God so loved the world, and God is not real to the world. You're trying to defend that love. You say, no, love, you know, then you pray, you know, what you do is love. Okay, that God will love you. What is that God doing to show that he loves you? No matter how you try to twist it, love is evil. It's fake emotion, fake feelings. It's not real. Love is not like you are taught. No, it's not. Fear, faith, hope, love, they are not like you are taught. They come to distort your thoughts. They come to damage your brain and keep you foolish. You're living in fear, living in faith, living in hope and love. And they even tell you that the greatest, I mean, these three abide, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest is love, which is a lie. The greatest is knowledge, because when you have knowledge, you will not fear. When you have knowledge, you will not have faith, you will not believe. When you have knowledge, you will not hope. When you have knowledge, you will not love. 
you will care. Can't you see? Nobody, have you seen, have you heard about health love? Love giving. No, it's health care. Care giving. Love, what? But they tell you, says it's love making. And if you are not married and have sex, it is a sin, abomination. Why you did not have the sexual organ after marriage? You, ha you were born with it. You're supposed to be having sex. Immediately you are born and begin to have a sexual urge. It's natural thing. That's why, no, you see all those holy families, how restricted they were trying to hold their daughters and their daughters end up having pregnancy. They say, what, well, you bring shame to us. No, because you cannot cheat nature. You cannot. No matter how you try, you can never cheat nature. That's why that pastor that is preaching holiness to you is fucking all the women in the church. And most times it's after their death, the, 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 those women begin to say the truth. Because sometimes he uses something to threaten them. Let me show you an example in the Bible for you to understand what I'm saying. Exodus chapter 21, that love is bondage. Love is slavery. That's why the same thing with marriage is slavery. But let me read this for you to think. What makes people remain in bondage like love? Exodus 21, 2. I will read verse 2. Verse 2 to verse 6. He said that if you buy a Hebrew servant, or no, a slave, because they try to change uh, what it actually says. Okay. Let me read it. He said, if you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve you for six years. In the seventh year, he is to be set free without having to pay anything. It is evil to buy anybody. It is evil to have slave. It is evil. Verse 3. If he was unmarried when he became your slave, he is not to take a wife with him when he leaves. But if he was married when he became your slave, he may take his wife with him. So they were even in enslaving families. Of course, you know, that's what they did to us in America and in Europe. And it's still going on to today. Verse 4. If his master gave him a wife and she bore him sons and daughters, listen, where love comes in, the woman and her children belongs to the master. Whatever you are doing in the slavery system belongs to your master. Africans, look at all black celebrities, black leaders, all of them, whatever they are doing belongs to the, our slave masters. He said, and the man is to live by himself. But if the slave declares that he loves love, if a slave declares that he loves, that's why I don't declare I love. I don't love. Slaves love. That's why they tell slaves to love their enemies. That's what love does. It makes you a foolish person that loves his enemies. But if the slave declares, because they said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth declares, so the guy already betrayed himself, rejected himself, and declares that he loves his master. See, the master falls. What, who, what comes next? His wife and his children, and does not want to be set free. When you love, you don't want to be set free. Those, look at those that love God. They don't want to be set free. No matter how you try to free them, convince them, they don't want to be set free. Things that provoke them to begin to think is hardship. And your stubbornness, if you are stubborn enough 
to be dishing out the factual truth that you know one day they will come to their senses. If the slave declares that he loves, I don't love anybody. I don't love anything. I care for people. I care for things. And I treat them the same way they treat me. But if the slave declares that he loves, first his master, second his wife, and third his children, and does not want to be set free, as any child of God, do you want to be free? Say, no, I'm not in bondage. I am free. Blood of Jesus Christ has set me free. I am free, but you are not free to live your life without prayer. You are not free to sleep all day without prayer. You are not free to live all your life in one week without going to places of worship. You are not free. Do you know the bondage you are living in all that time you waste Take uh, dressing up to go to church or to go to your religious gathering. You are not yourself. You cannot believe in God and say you are free. Jesus cannot set you free. Jesus is a slave boat that convey you from yourself to your slave master, from your land to the land of your slave master. Jesus was never a living being. He never lived as a human being in human history. Jesus, the first time people heard about Jesus was a slave boat called the good ship Jesus. Jesus of Lumberg. Google it. If your church permits you to do so, or the Holy Spirit. <laughs> if the slave declared that he loves his master, his wife, and his children, and does not want to be free, then his master shall take him to the place of worship. Slaves are taken to the place of worship. Africans had no place of worship until the slave master came and took us to the place of worship. Now you hear Africans claiming to be children of God. You hear Africans claiming to be the Hebrew Israelites. You hear Africans claiming to be chosen. Then his master, who took you to the religion you belong to today, your slave master. If you are an African Christian, you a Christian was your slave master or is your slave master. If you are African Muslim, a Muslim was or is your slave master. Then his slave master will take him to the place of worship. Dear, what happens to this man? What happens to this woman? What happens to this foolish person when he's taken to the place of worship? Dear, he is to make him stand against the door or the doorpost and put a hole through his ear. That is what the word of God you hear in gathering in religious gathering places does to you. It pierces your ears to destroy your brain that you can't think for yourself. They say, lean not on your own understanding. And when the, the, the slave, when they, they, they make the slave stand against the door of the doorpost and put a hole through his ear, then he shall be his slave for life. They came, invaded us, war against us, defeated us, enslaved us, colonized us, took us to the place of worship where they pierce our ears. They make hole. They make that hole through our ears and mentally enslave us. They mentally enslave us to be slaves for life. Are we not slaves? Yes, we are. Are we not a foolish people? Yes, we are. We are still under the control of our slave master because we love our master. We love our wife. We love our children. 
so we don't want to be set free. We're even making laws in our land against those that want to set us free. We are even arresting those that want to set, want to set us free. The fifth thing that keeps them foolish is humility. This one is even deeper than love. It is humility that when you put humility and the love together, that's what creates um, 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 uh, Stockholm Syndrome. Where somebody now feel, have compassion for his slave master and can hit and kill his own brother or sister for that slave master. He blamed his own people and praising his slave master, saying that his ancestors did what make the slave master to enslave them. And he is victim of it and is okay by it. The slave master is God, the creator and the savior. And we are nothing. We are mortals who are we to question the slave master god who are we all we have to do is to love 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 one love one love one love one love one love peace one love one love one love one love keep us together in slavery this is what keep people foolish people in slavery they will never rise up to fight for their freedom because they fear they have faith they they have hope they have love and they are humble Slaves are humble. Free people are not humble. Slaves, when you slap them on this cheek, they turn the other one. Slaves, when you ask them to kill because you want to give them virgin, virgin they will go and kill themselves. They don't know that after they kill themselves, they cannot have virgin. They, they believe when they go to heaven, they can have it there. <laughs> no. It is now that you are alive, you can have women. When you die, you're not having any women. Because you are food, you go back and you be born again. Are we not a foolish people? If you are a black person, if you are an African person listening to me, are we not is a foolish people? I will give you some examples. You can add to it because it's, it's in everything. But I want to mention these ones. Are we not a foolish people when we are chasing, chasing rats? When, why our house is on fire? We are chasing rats. What are the rats? God. Money, that's what we are chasing. Fame, that's what we are chasing. Our land is in shambles. Our life is nothing to write home about. Our whole house is on fire. Yet we are chasing rats. We are not even trying to put up the fire. No, we're not trying to quench the fire or run away from the house that is burning. No, we are, we are there and it's burning us and we like it. What we are chasing is rats in the house. It's called money and the fame. Are we not foolish people to do such thing? So you see people. People that say there is poverty, you know, and the people are suffering in the land, but you see them spraying money in the party. Spraying money. Don't you see that? For a show. They use it to intimidate themselves. I have made it. They said I will not make it. Now I have made it. God has put them to shame. No, you are stupid. God has not put anyone to shame. And you have not made it. Because everything you have as a slave belongs to your slave master, not to you. Including your wife, your children. Those things you achieve. You are not a free people yet. They can come and destroy it just like that. They can come and kill you just like that. We are not free people. We are foolish people chasing rats while our house is on fire. Are we not foolish people when we are wasting money for barrier? Tell me, can't you see what we are doing in the name of barrier? especially the African Christians. Don't you see foolish things we do? You waste money buying coffin to bury a dead body. 
you waste money. Say you are printing souvenir, you know, you are doing this, doing wasting money in the name of burial. Even you see people today, mostly in Africa, dancing with coffin on their head. But before, when they see somebody with even small coffin in their hand, they say witchcraft, oh, witchcraft, oh, evil, evil. But they buy the big one to bury their own dead body. Foolish people, let me say it again, and I will keep saying it until I die. When I die, don't wash my body. Don't dress my body. Don't buy any coffin to bury me. When I die, throw me back to the earth naked. These people that are doing this barrier, and they are Christians in Africa, have a book that tells them, naked you came, naked you will go. They say, no, we don't support that part of the Bible. We are foolish. We, can, we, we, we came naked, and we must go clothed. We will not go back naked. And when their foolishness, where do you see their foolishness? In the earth or is under the ground, you see tamais eating the whole thing. Go to your family, that place you bury somebody, maybe, I don't know how long they stay in the earth, but let me use, for example, 10 years ago. Go there, dig up that grave. You will never see anything there anymore. Most thing you will see there is white sand. Sand. It's not ashes. It's not ashes. You are not ashes. And you are not dust. When you dig up there, you cannot see that person anymore. Because that person has been eaten. And born again. It's natural. Are we not foolish people? When we are loving our enemies and hating ourselves, Oh, white people who are united, they love one another, they support one another. Black people hate one another. They, they, they don't support one another. You are a liar. White people hate one another than black people hate themselves. White people thought black people hate. They thought us hate. Read their books to see. Hate and the love is of their God. Malachi chapter 1, I think 2 and 3. Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. I think in Romans chapter 9 or Romans chapter 9, he said that white children in the womb, but they know nothing. They don't know anything about evil. God declared that he hates, he love. That's what they taught us. They combated us to love them and they hate ourselves. They tell you if you don't love your enemies, the love of God is not in you. You are not like God. God love his enemy. Quit well. Where do God love his enemies? Oh, has God forgiven Satan? Oh, God and the Satan now are back in the same place. Huh? Oh, okay, okay. Wait. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. God said, bring all those who refuse to, those enemies of mine who refuse to let me rule over them and kill them before me. We are foolish people converted to love our enemies and hate ourselves. You must be a stupid person to think or say that black people hate themselves or killing themselves. Had they been Russia and Ukraine are African countries, many Africans will still say, be saying, Black people who hate themselves, they're killing themselves. Can't you see what is happening in Russia and the Ukraine? Let's say Ghana and Nigeria have that, that type of problem. You see how black people were carrying it on their head, but they will never pause and say, what is the cause of this? What is the, the, the top root of this thing among us? 
because we are foolish people. We are the way we are today because we are foolish people. We are believers today. We are no longer builders. When we were builders, we were wise people. But when they came and combated us, according to the Genesis chapter 11, 1 to 9, we became believers, we became foolish people. We are no longer builders. We are believers today. And that's why when you don't believe, they see you as a stupid person. They see, they ostracize you, they, they, they disassociate with you. They see you as the devil. But they don't know that devil is a believer also, according to James chapter 2, verse 19. Are we not foolish people? Building churches and mosques for God, building shrines for God. God we claim to be almighty, but he cannot build his own house. We have to contribute to build house for God. And they also have the book that tells them, God does not dwell in those things you build, but they are building it. Foolish people. Think, think. Are we not foolish people to worship, to go to a place of worship, church or mosque or temple or synagogue, to worship the God we believe is everywhere? If God is everywhere, why are you going there? Why are you gathering there for worship of God? You can worship God wherever you are because God is wherever you are true or false, according to your own claims. Your life is contradictory because you are foolish people. You are not living your life. You are living the life of the race set before you. That's the race you are running. Are we not stupid people selling our women into slavery called marriage? The same Exodus chapter 21. Let me read it. 7 to 11, for you to understand that marriage is slavery. And they don't treat men and women the same way in marriage. In marriage, the man is the husband, another word for master, and the woman is the slave. That's why the woman must be submissive to the man in marriage, not the other way around, not equal. Marriage is not 50-50 among a man and a woman, no. In marriage, the woman must submit. If you don't submit, they will call you foolish woman. They will call you all names. Even some people that claim to be woke Africans, they still believe that nonsense, that they are greater than women. Men greater than women is evil. 7 to 11, Exodus 21. If a man sells his daughter as a slave, when they say that man give his daughter's hand in marriage, yesterday I even said, I tell, I told my daughter yesterday, I will never give your hands, you, I will never give your hands to any man in marriage. I will never. I don't want you to get married. I'm already telling her because she's 22 now, right? For her to know, I said, do you see me putting pressure on you, telling you to make me proud? No, it's yours for yourself. And we are talking about her getting job and all our life. I say, listen, you force, you force. You don't need to submit to any man. You all you need is a partner. If you are looking for somebody to live with, you're gonna be 50-50. Don't submit to anyone. To submit to somebody means you are a slave. A majority of our people are proud slaves. They tell you. I am proud to be a slave. I'm proud to be a Catholic. I'm proud to be Anglican. I'm proud to be evangelical. I'm proud to be Pentecostal. I'm proud to be a child of God. I'm proud to be a follower of Jesus. I'm proud to be a minister of the gospel. Slaves. If a man sells his daughter as a slave, that's as a wife, she is not to be set free as male slaves are. Male slaves are free. They go free. Remember the previous uh, verses. He said the guy can serve uh, for six years. On the seventh year, he go free. But the woman, dumb, there's no such condition for woman. Woman is there forever. Even if he leave you, you must be enslaved to another man. I think when you read the uh, Numbers chapter one, if I'm still correct, chapter one, it tell you there, as a woman, you must submit to your father. If you, are, if you are not married, submit to your father. If you're married, submit to your husband. 
you are not free as a woman. They want you to remain a slave under a man. When a man and a woman give back to you, now the man is greater than the woman? Come on, think. Why are you selling your daughters unlike the same way you sell your sons? Why? If a man sells his daughter as a slave, she is not to be set free as male slaves are. If she is sold to someone who intends to make her his wife. <laughs> Give me your daughter's hand in marriage. I want her to be my wife. Slave. If she is sold to someone, if she's married to someone who intends to make her his wife, but he doesn't like her. After. And this after always happens after sex. Say, no, no, she's not morning as I want. Oh, the, 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 the vagina is, was not tight as I, I thought. Mm -mm. And that's why many marriages, Christian marriages, uh, crumble because of that feeling. The man have that first time. After all the years of courtship, claiming she's virgin, now the first time they have says Mongo Park discovered Juvenile. <laughs> if but if he do, I mean but he doesn't like her, then she is to be sold back to his father to her father. Sold back. You're a slave woman. That's what the Bible is all about when it comes to women. Woman is slave. Woman is the cause of our downfall. Woman is unholy. Woman is unclean. Read their book and see how they subjugated women. And today, Stockholm Syndrome won't let women think and feed themselves. That's why I'm focusing on women. You see the pictures I'm using, videos I'm using about women? If I have the power to have my own web... Um, Soft, uh, software or platform that no one can censor me. Everything will be nude. What I'm sharing is not nude. They are complaining. If I share nude, you know how many times Facebook have blocked me for sharing nude? And it's not actually nude, though. But they block me because they consider it nude. Women, we need, we, when women wake up, all this freedom we're talking about will be so easy. Look at men who are saying they are fighting for freedom. Have they succeeded? No. Because we are missing the main thing. Where is our women and where is our weapons? We need these two things. Without our women and our weapons, we will never get our freedom. That's why we are afraid to fight because we don't have women, we don't have weapons. All we have is words, making speeches. Oh, France, we don't want France anymore, blah, blah. When you talk finish, you shut up and sit down. You shut up. You say, I'm not going to shut up. They shut you up themselves. You don't know how to do it masterfully. If he doesn't like her, then she is to be sold back to her father. Her ma you see, that's why you see some women, they don't want to be divorced by their husband though, because if they follow through marriage, the, fa the father must return whatever that man paid to marry her. You know, that's what marriage is all about. But you are pretending like, no, it's not. My own is different. It depends on your perspective. Marriage, no, marriage is slavery. Then you're trying to make it maybe work for you or all that. Okay, that's your business, but you see, you are lying to yourself. Because if you say the truth, you will not stay married. Like myself, I can never marry again. I can never marry any woman. No, I have women, I have women. I can have women, but I cannot marry women. Worst thing you can do to a woman is marrying her. When you marry a woman, it's like you cutting that flower you say that is beautiful. You cut it. Oh, it's beautiful. That flower will just die. That flower, you cut it already. That's what marriage does to women. But because of some provision, some of them, yeah, 
my husband is my adobe. He, he spends on me. He pays for my abroad holidays. He's, he lavish gifts on me. Hey, my husband, this my husband, that you are stupid. That's why you are happy being a slave to a man. Your call husband, does he have two heads? Can that man submit to you? No. And you don't know that marriage is slavery because of that? Our master cannot say her to foreigners because he has treated her unfairly. If a man buys a female slave to give to his son, when they say your father married wife for you, just like Abraham married wife for Isaac, If a man buys a female slave to give to his son, he is to treat her like a daughter. If, uh, uh, let me read that again, thank. Hear what he said. If a man buys a female slave, a woman, to give to his son, he said, the man who give that woman to his son, should treat that woman like a daughter, but she is a slave to his son. But they are treating you, that's pretending you are not a slave, but you are a slave. Oh, my daughter-in-law, come, I will buy you this, I will do this, I will do that. Yeah. You are my daughter, oh, my daughter, come, my daughter, come. She's a slave. She's your daughter, can she inherit part of your inheritance? No. But hear what he said. He said, if a man takes a second wife, another slave, <laughs> he must continue to give his first wife, that's the first slave, the same amount of food and clothing and the same rice that she had before. That's what makes that woman stay submissive. Provision. The man is providing for her. I tell my wife that, and I've, I've made that uh, here several times. You are free to fuck whoever you want to fuck. But you, you need to understand also, as you are free to fuck whoever you want, also, that man is free from providing for you. Do you hear that now? That's why majority of our women don't want to sleep with another man except their husband. Because they know any day they get caught, the man will stop providing for her and nobody will question her, uh, will question him. Everybody will support him because that is the system. Oh, he's a pro she's a prostitute. Eh? I said, okay, yeah, the same way. If you sleep with uh, whoever you want, when you have problem, also go ar around all of them collecting what you need. You can't be sleeping around and focus on one man to be providing for you and claiming he is your husband. Your husband is your provider. And whoever you're having sex with, both of you are supposed to provide them for one another. If you're in problem, they can provide for you. If they're in problem, you can provide for them. Oh, the same way you share in sex, you should also share in problem. <laughs> it's the same thing. They will not tell you this factual truth. But I'm telling it to you free of charge. He said, if he does not fulfill these duties to her, he must set her free and not receive any payment. I set mine free without receiving any payment. I divorced without demanding anything back. I don't need it. Just like what is happening between me and my siblings, the people I taught, you know, we will share and enjoy everything in our family together. They end up disappointing themselves. Things I didn't need before, now they made me need them. Even if I don't want to use them, I can sell them, I can dash them to anybody I want, but not them. Are we not foolish people giving birth to children in poverty? 
are we not foolish people? You said the world is corrupt. The world is wicked. And you are having birth, bringing children more in it. When you die, those children continue from where you stop suffering like you suffer head. Are we not foolish? Having children we cannot take, out, take care of. You see these people, they say they believe in the almighty God that can do all things and cares about them or loves them. So why are you crying and complaining about government? What is happening in your area? How people are robbing people? How people are killing people? How bad, bad things are happening everywhere? How about your God? What is your God doing about it? You blame the government. You blame everyone. You even blame yourself, but not God. The God you worship, the God you say, you, you dress up and go to a place, say you're worshiping that God and supporting that God with your hard earned money. Wasting your time and your resources in the name of God because you are foolish. Are we not foolish? You see children laboring to provide for their parents. That is the height of foolishness. Are we not foolish to be doing that? Child labor, child abuse. I suffered child labor. I suffered child abuse. In the hand of my parents. Because they had me in poverty. And they were doing everything their religion taught them to raise me in the way they want, that I will not depart when I grow up. But because I am a Bubedike, I am different. I departed from it without minding whose ox is God. It is evil for children to labor to provide for their parents. Oh, see the house I built for my poor parents. That is evil. Then you see majority of young people traveling abroad to go make money by all means. Some of them prostituting. Some of them pushing drugs. Some of them swallowing drugs. Some of them died in the process. Some of them end up in prison. Some of them succeeded and come back claiming, yes, God has blessed them to chase away poverty from their family. No, you have not just away any poverty. You just dip yourself deeper in it. You are even poorer. It is evil for children to save up for parents. Parents are supposed to provide for their children, not the other way around. Are we not foolish people? Taking mythology, taking cosmology, taking fairy tales, taking uh, uh, folklore and the scriptures seriously. Do you know that's what you call spirituality? Don't you know that is what religion is all about? Taking myths and fairy tales and scriptures serious. You don't suppose to take those things serious. Illusion, delusion, hallucination. You take them serious and claim it's a spiritual thing. Oh, you don't, you can't understand it. He says, no, there's nothing spiritual about uh, about illusion, about delusion and hallucination. These things are your thoughts. And if you cannot control them, they control you. And when they control you, they ring you, making you a foolish person. Oh, my prophecy is true. My dream is true. My bullshit. What has it done for you in reality? All you are seeing is evil. <clears throat> As I say, it is easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. That's why you hear believer taste telling you, convince me, convince me. You don't need to be convinced because if they succeed, succeed, succeeded in convincing you, they will convert you. You will no longer be yourself. In closing, I will leave it. Matthew, this is how Africans became 
what they are today, foolish people. That's converted people. Matthew 23, verse 15. How terrible for you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees. You, hypocr you hypocrites, you sell the sea and the cross whole countries to win one combat. And when you succeed, you make him to wise as deserving of going to hell as you yourselves are. It is easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. That is why con artists called ministers of God are taking advantage of the, their gullibility and the passiveness. They are there to receive the message, but they cannot reply. That's why they always hear, Amen, Amen. Somebody said, by the end of April, you and your family will travel, and you are yelling, Amen. Can't you see you are stupid? You and your family are supposed to plan when to travel, then you travel. It's not something you should be claiming. It's something you should prepare when you have the resources to do so. When it is time for you to do so, you know what time is best for you. You don't travel because somebody prophesied. You travel because you prepared for it. Unless you are a slave, you are foolish, which is what you are when you are claiming those prophecies they are declaring. Is it not what you see, the effects of war and colonialism to Africans that have conditioned us to be happy, stupid, happy, foolish people? Happy slaves. Oh God, I love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, today's service was amazing. See how much you bless us. Lord, this week, open door for us as we go out there for whatever reason we are going out. Oh God, go before us. Open doors for us. No, they already turn you against the door and against the doorpost. You cannot escape slavery unless you come to yourself and begin to think for yourself, dare to know for yourself, declare for yourself, begin to free yourself from the bondage of God, bondage of spirituality, bondage of religion, bondage of the unknown, bondage of fear, bondage of faith, bondage of hope, bondage of love, and the bondage of humility. No one else but you that can free yourself. Are you ready to free yourself? Are you still enjoying your chains in slavery? Think, us think. Trash God, trash beliefs. Dare to know. Live humanly. God in me.